Morning, ladies and gentlemen, how's about a nice round of applause? Defending champion and your 2023 St. Anthony Triathlon champion, Paula Finlay. Yeah, I gotta get that and we, we just hit a point where it's I'm very efficient with this. Yeah, like if I tried to do it, it's yeah. too frustrating for Eric because I'm like, Paula's can like, you can, can you build me, a bike? Help me. Like you could build a bike. Yeah, but I mean, with this specific case and all the ins and outs of these bars, Eric just knows. Like I've kind of uh, let go a little bit of like being anal about the bike stuff for packing because Eric's so good at it. And then Paula can figure out what time the pool's open for last one. Yeah, I have my own strength. <laughs> All right. We've already landed here in Ibiza. It's been a crazy travel. Uh, my hat blew away in the St. Anthony's transition, so this is my new uh, hat for exercising in. <laughs> uh, and this is a look back at St. Anthony's. We got out of there so quickly that we did not have time to film any post-race thoughts. A lot of this footage is going to be thanks to our friend Sam. We're incredibly fortunate to have her come along with us to take some beautiful pictures and kind of take her first crack at some video work. We're doing um, just like a 3K post travel yeah. a couple of sprints. Let's get the muscles going. Yeah. Mostly just like feel like you flush your body out of it, you know? You're just going down. Are you some okay? gonna dive into the cold pool? I don't think you're allowed person? to dive in. Oh. No diving, no diving, no diving. So you're gonna jump. I'll jump feet first. But I'm not gonna like slip in. I'm a I'm a one inch at a time. Oh you are? Sufferer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I hate cold water. <laughs> St. Anthony's. I love that race. I've been going to it for years. I will always try to go to it. I think the organization is great. The people are great. I really like the course and it's just, you know, like steeped in history, like Perry roubaix or, or something in cycling to that effect where it's just, it's been around as long as anybody can remember. And it's really like oh, any serious pro in the non-draft space seems to have done it at some point and it's 40 years of existence. Since we only were there for a couple of days before the race, we weren't really able to do as much of our normal hanging out and having a good time and all of that stuff. We were trying to drop down as late as possible from altitude and Flagstaff while also giving ourselves a little bit of time to uh, you know, get on the time change for the early start. And I'm still even deep in my head. 
The Braces Duathlon. Um, pretty annoying, but understandable. The I guess it's the Coast Guard here has issued a small craft advisory, which means that uh, the race cannot put boats out in the water in the morning, which means that they definitely cannot put swimmers out in the, mo in the water. So we just got back from the pro briefing. Oh, the other thing is that the race has now been moved from a it normally is like 6 30 a.m start 6 a.m start to a 8 a.m start and we will now have exactly two hours from the time we cross the finish line to the time that we need to leave here for the airport so i am currently packing on my mountain bike i don't think i talked about it all yet but uh my my fork broke like the last day that we were in flagstaff so sram incredibly overnighted me a new fork here for my bike I took it to the bike shop, got it cut, I put it on, got the right rotor, that's good to go. So I'm going to pack up the mountain bike and literally everything that I am not using to race so that as soon as we finish the race, we can get back here, I can put our TT bikes in bags and we can run to the airport to get to Ibiza as quickly as possible because our flight is uh, it's Sunday evening. That's what's happening. It's uh, super It's super annoying, it's frustrating, but I get it. My game plan certainly would have been to make any sort of attempt to get a little bit of separation from Jason West in the water and just see if I can build on that on the bike. And now that's gonna go the opposite direction. He'll likely have 15, 20 seconds on me after the first run and I can't imagine a scenario where I can catch him and drop him with any sort of <laughs> uh, convincing amount of time that it will uh, last through the 10k run, but uh, we'll see. It's always worth a shot. Not, you know, we were kind of prepared for this. We kind of thought this might happen, so I, it's not like completely out of left field unknown. And uh, oh, that helps a little bit with mentally switching gears a little bit. Anyway, that's it. I gotta put my mountain bike in a bag and uh, do a little bit of packing. Duathlons are probably my least favorite thing there is. <laughs> um, I think I swim really well and recover really quickly off of a hard swim, and it's kind of, uh, you know, I, I got in triathlon for a reason. I'm not a good duathlete. I did the best that I could. I came into transition in third place, I think, and I didn't feel too terrible, but it really takes the edge off. And some of the people who were there and a little fresher than normal you know, that was an issue. I got on the bike and did my normal race plan there. It took off pretty hard and I tried to put in a lot of work in the first couple of miles and I think I just blew myself up a little more than I <laughs> would have hoped. And I think I did a lot more work directly into a headwind than I should have. After a couple of turns and almost getting taken out by a truck at about mile three, Matt Sharp came by me and I got to experience sitting behind him legally going into a headwind and it was shocking. I went from holding 360 watts to 260 watts and that's kind of when I realized that I'd done a little bit too much at the wrong time tactically. And to be honest, my legs just felt terrible. I don't know if it's duathlon or it's the altitude or what, but that was, I had a rough time and came into transition about 20 seconds down 
and it just I honestly felt like felt like I was in quicksand like one of those terrible dreams where you just like want to run hard and you can't nothing's moving it felt awful uh, and that's that got to the end I think I was, I was sixth or seventh place Still haven't really gone and looked at results. I just went back and packed our bikes to get ready to go to Bisa and tried to not dwell on it too much because we were going to be racing the next weekend. Bummer, but um, but it happened. And like I said, I don't know exactly why. Put some thought into it. But for the most part, right now I need to move on and get ready for this race. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm like bummed, but I just definitely didn't have the greatest feelings. And to me, racing is, winning is important, but also with big races coming up next week and throughout the season, I really wanted to have a race where I felt really fast and felt fit and felt flowing. And that wasn't how I felt in St. Anthony's. So yeah, my takeaway was that in duathlons, you, you really have to be ready to go out hard. Hopefully I'll never have to do another one, but I was thinking the first run might be a little bit more controlled and that people would kind of just settle in, but it went out in like a 310 per K, faster than I've run all year for a kilometer, and not even at the lead. I was like dangling off the back, so I knew that that gap could be closed on the bike, so I wasn't panicking, but I was just kind of like uncomfortable for that whole first 2K. Um, the bike was like the most windy conditions I've experienced, and I of often say that, like this is the most I've ever done this, this, this but it was actually the windiest. Um, huge gusts at every, um, especially between buildings riding downtown, and it was so windy they banned disc wheels for the amateur athletes. They made an exception for us because we didn't have any alternatives, but it was crazy. And I think I came out of Aero probably five times just out of like being scared and getting blown over, and my gut reaction when that happens is to sit up. But I am proud of how I, did deal with the wind. I think if that had been a training ride or like me even a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have been able to handle that kind of adversity um, with the weather conditions. And I do think that powering through that and getting through it improved my confidence for if there were another windy race, like I know I can ride in it, it's going to be fine. It's a little scary, but it is a feeling you have to get used to because it is common to have wind in races and in training. And I was feeling flat and not breathing hard, but just like I couldn't turn my legs over. And maybe that's just a um, effect of coming down from altitude, but just tried to stay really relaxed and ultimately won. And what I realized afterwards is people don't really care whether you win a world championship or St. Anthony's. It's like a win is so exciting for people. So I truly appreciate all of the excitement you guys shared with me in that. and. Um, being happy for me. Even though it wasn't the biggest race on my calendar, it still counts as a win. So I'm happy about that. And uh, yeah, if anything, it's it's great to get that under my belt before heading to, a, or before racing in Ibiza. We're actually in Ibiza already. We got all our stuff. The travel was relatively smooth. It was like one eight hour flight and then one two hour flight. So as easy it can get as it can get. Coming from Florida to Europe. Uh, our bikes made it, we got a rental car. We're comfortable, we are ready to spend a week here and start to get onto the time zone and enjoy the European breakfasts and the baguettes and the coffee and just have a nice week um, so that both of us can feel ready on the weekend.